Hello everyone, my name is Adnan and in this video we're gonna go through the basics of Quixel Bridge 2019. With its 3D viewport and texture map previewer, a comprehensive download manager that is up to 4 times faster than the Megascans website, and its integration plugins for all major 3D softwares and game engines, Bridge is an incredibly useful tool for any artist or studio. The software is available for Windows, Linux, and Mac, and you can try it for free. When you open up Bridge for the first time, you're gonna need to select your default target application. This will automatically download the integration plugin for that specific software. In this case, I'm just gonna select Maya, and next I'll set my library path. Bridge has already suggested a path that I have on my C drive, so I'm gonna use this one instead. Now that I'm all said and done, I'm just gonna click on Save Changes. You can change these settings at any point from the edit menu. Bridge will display a notification as soon as the Maya integration has been downloaded. With that out of the way, let's have a look at the interface. Quixel Bridge's interface is split into three distinct components. The first one is the library viewport, which displays thumbnails of all the assets within the library. The second one is the search bar at the top of the library viewport. The search bar is a powerful tool that allows you to quickly find what you're looking for. And the third one is the left panel, which contains multiple categories like latest assets, free assets, downloaded assets, favorites, and so on. It also gives you access to multiple subcategories that let you find assets quickly. You can also explore collections, which represent specific environments that have all the content you need to build something similar. The Rebirth demo we recently published at GDC was created entirely with the Icelandic collection for instance. If you go inside the downloaded tab, you'll notice that it's empty and that's because we haven't downloaded anything yet. So let's go to the latest category and download some assets. This page is where you'll get to see all the recently added Megascans assets. If you feel like the thumbnails might be too big or too small, you can easily change that by going to the view and thumbnail size menu. I'm gonna go back and set the value to 400 instead, just to have more assets visible in my viewport. Before we start downloading assets, I'll just log in with my Megascans credentials and then sign in. Now that I'm signed in, I can easily view the amount of points that I have, and I can also open my account settings. I also have the ability to download Quixel Mixer within Bridge. Mixer is a material authoring software that allows you to easily combine all these scans and create unique materials for your specific needs. Alright, let's download our first asset. I'm gonna search for 3D rocks by typing 3D rocks. As you can see, I have a whole bunch of different options to play with, and it seems like I had already acquired this one actually. You can find that out by checking the icon at the top right of the thumbnail. Instead of downloading it right away, I'll head over to the Acquire tab, and we'll find the asset right there as well. Now to download this asset, I can either click on the download icon at the top right, or click on the thumbnail itself, which will open up the side panel. With the help of the side panel, you can actually preview an asset, its texture maps, and see what it looks like with the new 3D viewport. This gives you a very clear idea of what the asset you're about to download looks like. I'll click on this icon to go to full screen mode and now I can rotate around my asset to view it in all angles. Now remember, we haven't even downloaded this yet, but we can already see if this is the exact rock we're looking for. The texture resolution is capped when you preview assets online, but as soon as you download them, you'll be able to not only preview the textures in 4K, but also see all the different LODs. Now I'm gonna close the full screen window, and right below the 3D viewport I have my asset name, its state, which in this case is acquired, the ability to set it to favorites, and to report the asset if I ever come up with an issue. We have a description of the asset right here, and we can also view the scale of the asset with this icon. The open icon here lets you know whether the mesh is open or closed, and in this case, as you can see at the bottom of the surface in the viewport, the mesh is actually open. The assembly icon lets you know whether the asset is a single object or an assembly. Now, an assembly is basically an object composed of multiple sub-objects. If you take this rock for instance, we have many smaller rocks around it, which makes it an assembly. 
And next we have similar objects, which gives you a good idea of what other object you might download with this one. If you click on one of these rocks, the site panel will automatically load its parameters and refresh your preview. Now if you want to find all the components to build an environment instead of just similar rocks, you actually have the collection, which corresponds to an entire biome for this asset. Now before we click download, I'm gonna go to the download settings and here I can set my texture resolution. In this case it's in 8K, but I actually want it to be in 4K, so let's just click on that. I can also set my own material preset. Now whenever you download an asset, you're gonna get a few texture maps with it. In this case you have the albedo, displacement, normal and roughness. If I change it to unreal, you'll notice that the preset doesn't change, and that's because Unreal only needs those maps. Setting it to Unity Specular will give us a specular workflow for Unity. The next option is Mesh Format, which allows me to toggle between FBX or OBJ. The LOD list allows you to select what level of detail mesh you want to download, and the triangle count of each LOD is displayed on the right, which can be handy for managing your polygon budget before even downloading something. Then you have multiple normal maps for downloading a normal map tailored toward each LOD. Next you have Source Z tool, which allows you to get the ZBrush project file of the scan, brushes which are extracted from the rock and can be used for sculpting or painting within Mixer, and High Poly Source to get the high resolution mesh of the asset. Alright, I think we're done with the download settings, so let's hit download. You can track your download progress in the download manager, and next time you download a 3D asset, just hit the download icon at the top right corner of your asset. A progress bar will then be displayed on the thumbnail of the asset, which allows you to track its progress without leaving the viewport's grid. Then if I go to the downloaded tab, we should find our newly downloaded rocks. I'm gonna go back to the acquired tab and download a bunch of other assets. Instead of doing it manually by clicking on the download icon of every asset I want to download, I can also drag my mouse over a few assets that I want to download and that'll create a marquee selection. Once I release my left mouse button, the side panel will automatically show up with all the selected assets and their respective cost in points. In this case, however, the assets we're about to download won't cost any points, and that's because we're in the Acquired tab. I'm gonna go to the Latest tab and select a bunch of assets that I want to download. Before I click on Download, I'll open the Global Download Settings, and in the Surface Type, I'll set my resolution to 4K, and that should be it. Now I'm gonna click on Download, and I'll go to the Downloaded tab once my downloads are over. Alright, I've downloaded a few other assets, and now that I'm in the downloaded section, let's explore its different parameters. First off, to open the folder of an asset, you can simply click on the folder icon over here, and this will automatically open the folder of the asset, where you can see all the files that have been downloaded for this asset. And now I'll click on the thumbnail of this asset, which will open up the side panel again. Next, I'll go to the Export Settings tab, and from there I have access to all my export parameters. First, I can change the texture resolution of my asset. I can also change the texture formats to PNG, TGA, and so on. And the geometry can be exported either with the FBX or OBJ format. You can also pick up any LOD you want to export or go straight with the high poly. And the last drop down allows you to select your target application's live link. A live link is an integration plugin that automatically exports the geometry and creates the proper shader setup for one or multiple objects, all by simply clicking on the export button in Bridge. Alright, that should be it for this video. Check out our live link installation videos to quickly get up to speed with all our different plugins and let us know which live link you'd like to see covered with new tutorials. This first 2019 release of Quixel Bridge marks the beginning of a long series of updates that will redefine content management and make everyone's lives easier. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time.